ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாய ரீடிங் ஃப்ரம் ஸ்ரீமத் பகவத்கீதா சாப்டர் டுவெல் சாப்டர் என்டைட்டில்டு டிவோஷனல் சர்வீஸ் டெக்ஸ்ட் நம்பர் டுவெண்டி ஏது தர்மாமிருதமிதம் யோக்தம் பரியுபாசத்தே பக்தாஸ்தே அத்தீவ மே பிரியா ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் அண்ட் பர்போர்ட் பை ஹிஸ் டிவைன் கிரேஸ் ஏசி பக்தி வேதாந்த சுவாமி ஸ்ரீல பிரபுபா ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் தோஸ் ஹூ ஃபாலோ திஸ் இம்பரிஷபிள் பாத் ஆஃப் டிவோஷனல் சர்வீஸ் அண்ட் ஹூ கம்ப்ளீட்லி எங்கேஜ் தெம்செல்ஸ் வித் ஃபெய்த் making me the supreme goal or very very dear to me purport in this chapter from verse 2 through the end from maya veshya mano yemam fixing the mind on me through ye dharm ye tu dharmam ritam idam the supreme lord has explained the processes of transcendental service for approaching him such processes are very dear to the lord and he accepts a person engaged in them the question of who is better one who is engaged in the path of impersonal brahman or one who is engaged in the personal service of the supreme personality of god was raised by arjuna and the lord replied to him so explicitly that there is no doubt that devotional service to the personality of godhead is the best of all processes of spiritual realization in other words in this chapter it is decided that through good association one develops attachment for pure devotional service and thereby accepts a bona fide spiritual master and from him begins to hear and chant and observe the regulative principles of devotional service with faith attachment and devotion and thus becomes engaged in the transcendental service of the lord this path is recommended in this chapter therefore there is no doubt that devotional service is the only absolute path for self realization for the attainment of the supreme personality of god and the impersonal conception of the supreme absolute truth as described in this chapter is recommended only up to the time one surrenders himself for self realization in other words as long as one does not have the chance to associate with a pure devotee the impersonal conception may be beneficial in the impersonal conception of the absolute truth one works without fruitive result meditates and cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter this is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee fortunately if one develops directly a desire to engage in krishna consciousness in pure devotional service he does not need to undergo step by step improvements in spiritual realization devotional service as described in the middle six chapters of the bhagavad gita is more congenial one need not bother about materials to keep body and soul together because by the grace of the lord everything is carried out automatically oh my so we are continuing to discuss this bhagavad gita 12th chapter so today we are discussing on the last verse of the 12th chapter which is entitled devotional service ha huh. so as some of you who have come earlier in this 12th chapter krishna is discussing the qualities of a devotee ha huh. from verse number 13 to 20 in eight verses krishna talks about different qualities of a devotee 
he says that how a devotee is non envious adveshta sarva bhutanam uh, how he is a kind friend to all living entities uh, so so many qualities krishna is describing now in the concluding verse krishna is telling that those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith are very very dear to me so in the previous verses if you see krishna says that how a person who is non envious is very dear to is dear to me is very dear to me like that he says so but in this verse he says that those who follow this path of devotional service is very very dear to me bhaktaste ativa me priya so there are different qualities which krishna uh, talks about the qual- uh, different qualities of a devotee which krishna mentions in the previous verses but the most important quality of a devotee is, is that he is engaged in the devotional service to lord krishna so when this is like the primary quality of a devotee and when a person has this particular quality then automatically all the other qualities will manifest like in the material world we may see many persons who are having who may be having nice qualities like he may be like merciful tolerant uh, he may not be attached to uh, different circumstances he may be equal to uh, equal to friends and enemies but then because a person he may not ha- have the quality of rendering devotional service to lord krishna so although one may have may- many other qualities which may look very attractive but when a person faces some disturbance in his life then he actually his real nature will come out and all these qualities will vanish just like suppose if you have a row of pearls which are kept so it may look very attractive a row of, row of pearls which are kept in ordered manner which may look very attractive but then when you slightly agitated then immediately all the pearls will go here and there similarly a person may have many wonderful qualities but then if he does not have this quality of rendering devotional service to lord krishna then when he faces some small disturbance in his life then immediately all those good qualities will vanish and then he may start behaving in a way which may be opposite to what he behaved previously but on the other hand a person who is a devotee of the lord he may not exhibit certain good qualities but then because he is fixed in rendering devotion service to the lord at least the thread is intact so when the thread is intact then you can even if you uh, you can add more pearls into that and then those pearls will not get uh, will not go astray even when you disturb that thread because the foundation is there that is the thread is intact so similarly when a person is engaged in devotion service to the lord he may not sometimes he may not manifest the good qualities but then because he is fixed in the devotion service to the lord so it is a matter of time before he manifests all the good qualities huh. so that is a difference between a devotee and non devotee so the main quality of a devotee of a person is that he is engaged in devotion service to the lord and because of this quality he manifests all the other qualities which krishna talked about in the previous verses and then in this particular verse it is described etu dharma dharma amritam idam those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service so this path of devotional service is imperishable it is eternal in fact prabhupad comments in the purport he says that this religion of eternal engagement so this path of devotion service is eternal like there is a group of people group of philosophers called mayavadis they also sometimes practice this path of devotion service but then 
their conception is that we practice this path of devotional service till the point we become God. Once we become God, then there is no need to practice this path of devotional service. They may be chanting the holy names of the Lord, they may be worshipping the deity forms of the Lord, but then their purpose is to merge into the form of the Lord. They, feel, they think that, oh, we can also, everyone is God, at present we have forgotten our position as God, so we practice this process till the point we become God. Once we become God, there is no need to practice this. So, but then Prabhupada is actually condemning this particular point of view and he is saying that this path of devotional service, it is a religion of eternal engagement. Like in the material world, like we have the conception that when a person is working in a particular company or working for a government, so he works for, uh, till the age of 59 or 60 uh, till the age of retirement, then after, when that rage comes, then he retires from the job and then he just stays at home. So there is a conception of retirement in any service which we render in this world. But in the path of devotional service, there is no conception of retirement. Because a con- the conception of retirement arises only in the case that because a person thinks that, like, in, in the mundane service, a person lose at, loses attraction for that particular service after a period of time. That is the nature of any service in this world. Huh. A person is rendering service to a company. Initially, one may be exi- excited to join a company. And after some time, he gets bored with the job and he wants to switch over to some other job. Huh. The boss fries out. Huh, in his job, or, or a person enters into a relationship, he gets married, or then, or then after some time, uh, he loses taste in the relationship, so he or she, they may want to get divorced, they, mo- they may want to change a different partner. So, basically one thinks, the, uh, the underlying principle in any mundane service in this world is, that after a period of time, one loses attraction for that particular service. That is why there is a conception of retirement. Hmm. And even, even if a person continues to do the service, that is because like he basically tolerates the service because like he wants certain money so that as long as he is getting the money, he will do the service. As long as he does not get any money, then he will stop doing the service. But then, the path of devotional service is a path of eternal engagement. So, because it is a path of eternal engagement. That means that in this path, when a person engages in this devotional service, the happiness one gets because of rendering devotional service to the Lord, it never ceases. In fact, it continues to, it, it simply goes on increasing when a person renders a devotional service in a proper attitude. Hmm. In fact, like sometimes once a reporter asked Srila Prabhupada, he asked that, what do you hope to achieve by chanting Hare Krishna? Prabhupada said, like by chanting Hare Krishna, we want to chant more. The reporter was surprised. <laughs> because, like, he was expecting though, maybe by chanting Hare Krishna for a certain number of years, he is going to get something in return. And Prabhupada, he was saying that by chanting Hare Krishna, we are going to chant more. Huh. Our purpose of chanting Hare Krishna is to chant more and more. So, that is the actually path of devotional service. And once, Srila Prabhupada was, I think, in Mayapur. So, he was crossing, he was going in the fields. So, there was a small, uh, in that particular path, there was a, uh, the land was cut, like, there was a slope in that. So, in order to cross that particular piece of land, so he had to take the help of the other disciple. So, the disciple went and then Pro, uh, he actually helped Prabhupada in crossing that. After Prabhupada crossed, he actually 
through the can, uh, he actually reacted in such a way that like, he does not want the disciple anymore. The disciple was little uh, taken aback. Then Prabhupada said, this is how the Mayavadis actually react. So they follow this path of devotional service uh, and they follow this path till the point they till the point they become God. Once they become God, or they think one, they think that once they become God, then they will actually uh, leave the path of devotional service, or they will leave, they will reject the Guru who actually guided in the path of devotional service. But then that is not the actual conception. In fact, a person practices devotional service in this world in, a, in order to get perfection, and when a person becomes perfect then he continues to engage in devotional service. That is why Prabhupada says, this is the path of eternal, this is a religion of eternal engagement. And then, in this particular chapter, this particular chapter is entitled devotional service. In fact, this particular chapter started with Arjuna asking a question to Lord Krishna. Arjuna asked the question, which is better, whether meditation on the impersonal form of the Lord, is that better or engaging in the personal service uh, to the personality of God, which is better? So there are three aspects of the absolute truth. Huh? There is like the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth and then the localized Paramatma aspect, localized aspect of the absolute truth. And the, the third aspect is the personality of Godhead or the Bhagavan aspect. So, Krishna answered that the impersonal, meditation, meditation on the impersonal form of the Lord is actually troublesome. Huh. Rendering devotional service to the personal form of the Lord is superior to the meditation on the impersonal form of the Lord. I was explaining previously that when a person meditates on the impersonal form of the Lord, one gets certain happiness, but that is not the highest. Just like, like suppose, I was giving the example that, like suppose, like, you are not eaten for two days. Huh. So then, you are so hungry, and finally, somebody brings a plate filled with nice feast, with puris and halwas and different sabjis and pulao, everything. But then, he tells, he tells you that you are only allowed to smell the feast prasadam which is kept in front of you. So you are not allowed to see or eat, you are only allowed to smell it. So when you smell the wonderful feast, with your eyes closed, you will get some realization of what is there in the plate. Huh. So that is like the preliminary understanding. That is like the realization of the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth. But then you, if you are told, okay, you are allowed to smell and see the preparations which are made, but you are not allowed to eat. Huh. So that is like realization of the Paramatma aspect of the Absolute Truth. Huh. Shri Shri Radha Gopinath ki jai, Shri Shri Gornitai ki jai, Shri Gopal ji ki jai. So you get a better understanding of what all is cooked. You can, you can understand what is the texture of different food, what is the color, huh, the shape of the preparations. So that is like the realization of the Paramatma aspect. But then, that is not the highest. The highest realization of the food is when you actually eat the prasadam. Even if you are blind, even if your nose is completely blocked, you cannot smell anything. But then if you eat the food, you get the full realization of the food which is cooked. So similarly, the realizing the personal aspect of the Lord is like the highest realization of the Absolute Truth. So when you release the personal aspect of the Lord, you get the full understanding. You get the highest happiness. Hmm. 
or another example which somebody was saying like suppose when you are con- when you are suffering from severe constipation huh? suppose we are su- suffering from severe constipation so even if a b- full plate of uh, feast is kept in front of you you may not feel much attraction for it because all the time you are meditating on when i'll be able to clear my bowels so for a person who is suffering from severe constipation if he gets a chance to clear his bowels that is like a big relief for him huh. so similarly a person realization of the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth is simply relief from all the material miseries there is no positive happiness in that when a person who is suffering from constipation when he is able to clear his bowels he simply experiences relief of his problem he does not experience some positive happiness so similarly when a person realizes the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth he simply experiences relief from the miseries so that is the thing and then above then that is the realization of the personal paramatma aspect of the absolute truth that is like you are not only freed from the problem of constipation but then you are eating some you get to eat some rice and dal some rice and non spicy dal so that is like okay you are getting to are able to eat something so some positive happiness is there but then like uh, like the purpose of our, like having a stomach is not to just keep on eating just rice and non spicy dal <laughs> just eat three times a day you will get bored with that <laughs> so purpose of the belly is to eats different food stuffs which can satisfy the uh, our tongue because our tongue has different kinds of it can relish different kinds of taste so the realize yes eating rice and dal simply it is just some positive happiness is there so that is like releasing the paramatma aspect of the absolute truth but then higher than that is releasing the personality of god that is like eating a full fledged feast so krishna is saying that this path of meditating on the impersonal aspect of the absolute is actually troublesome and it is very difficult also and even if a person achieves success that is simply like a relief feature relief from the material miseries there is no positive happiness but releasing the personal aspect of the lord that actually gives the highest happiness and there is so much a positive happiness available that it does not it never ceases it keeps on increasing and in this like when a person tries to meditate on the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth a person practices severe renunciation and then he also tries to acquire lot of knowledge but then the path of devotional service is completely different when a person engages in the devotional service of the lord sincerely then automatically knowledge and detachment arises in such a person ha huh. like in the shrimad bhagavatam the first canto second chapter suta goswami says vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yoga prayojitah janayat yashu vairagyam gyanam chaya dahetukam suta goswami says by rendering devotional service unto the personality of god one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world so usually like this group of philosophers like gyanis and yogis they have a misconception about the path of devotional service they think that devotional service is like a material emotional affair it is meant for some less intelligent people but then prabhupa says that like these people they say that devotion service is like a material emotional affair in order to support that they give arguments like they say that like scriptures recommend so many things like sacrifice 
charity, austerity, etc. But then devotional service is meant for those who cannot perform these activities. Like austerity, charity, sacrifice. Like sacrifice, the person has to perform fire sacrifice. That is like, it's like an elaborate affair. Like uh, different brahmanas will be chanting different mantras. And will offer so many things in the fire sacrifice. So it looks very elaborate. And people think that those who cannot practice these particular activities, for them only devotional service is uh, meant. And then they say that devotional service is meant for less intelligent people, like Shudras or Vaishyas. Huh. But then Srila Prabhupada says that the path of a devotional service is the topmost of all transcendental activities. And therefore, it is sublime and easy. Huh. The topmost because of two reasons. It is sublime for the pure devotees who want to get in contact with the Lord. And it is easy for the neophytes who are just on the threshold of the house of devotional service. Like suppose, like when a person is preparing for a competitive exam, or when a person, say, prepares for, say, 12th standard exam. So there are different coaching classes, which actually, which give tuition for the students. Like suppose if a person has failed in the 12th standard exam, there are certain coaching classes which mainly target those people who have failed in the exam. Huh. When those, like in those coaching classes, they will mainly t- talk about important questions. They will mainly talk about those questions which will come, huh, so that when you memorize those questions, you will just at least pass the exam. Those, like when intelligent people attend those tuition classes, they will get bored. (laughs) Because those tuition classes are mainly meant for those who want to just pass. So, but then, like, there are certain coaching classes which are mainly meant for the intelligent people who want to get more marks. But then, if those people who are less intelligent, when they, if they attend those coaching classes, like, uh, it will be a bouncer for them because they just want to pass and these coaching classes, they want, they are teaching in terms of like, how to get 90%, 95 marks, etc. So, in this material world, like, certain coaching classes cannot cater to, one coaching class cannot cater to all kinds of people. But then, the path of devotional service is not like that. It is the topmost of all transcendental activities, because it is sublime for the pure devotees, who want to get in contact with the Lord. It is a sublime process for those who are already pure, those who are already advanced. At the same time, the same process is easy for the neophytes, who are just on the threshold of the house of devotional service, who have just entered to practice, who are just beginners in the path of devotional service. So that is the greatness of this path of devotional service. And then Srila Prabhupada says, to achieve the contact of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a great science. And it is open for all living beings, including Shudras, Vaishyas, etc. So what to speak of high grade Brahmanas? So, devotional service is so great, it it actually... uh, it can accommodate all kinds of people, the pure devotees and also the neophytes. And in this verse it is mentioned that when a person engages in devotional service, automatically knowledge and develop detachment arise in a person. It's like, suppose, like, uh, say night, like you are attending a festival in the temple. So the festival gets over at 10 o'clock, then you are served a big feast. Huh. Big feast, in puris and paneer sabji and then two or three sweets. All heavy items. Huh. So when you eat, 
such a heavy feast especially in the night time then like after you eat you may just go to your home and then you may just go to sleep if a person does not have the capacity to digest that like he will have to eat some different churna before going to bed <laughs> otherwise the next day will just whole day will just keep passing gas <laughs> so you will feel very uneasy when he gets up in the morning so when a person does not have the proper digestion capacity then he will have to separately eat some digestives in order to eat that food but then when a person has a good digestion capacity even if he is a good feast like he will not, he will not have any problem if he just go to sleep then next day he will get because he has good digestion capacity automatically the food will be, food will get digested huh. there is no need to take digestives so similarly when a person engages in devotional service this is like automatically knowledge and detachment will arise there is no need to like take some digestives there is no need to separately cultivate knowledge and detachment on the other hand those who practice this meditation on the impersonal absolute truth they will have to separately cultivate knowledge and detachment just like those people who do not have a proper digestion capacity they will have to separately eat digestives after eating a big feast so that is the power of devotional service like when a person practices this impersonal absolute truth like when a person separately cultivates knowledge and detachment like even if a person experiences certain miseries still one may not actually come to the senses just like suppose a pregnant lady pregnant lady when is actually suffering from, when she is suffering from labor pain she actually at that time she decides that that she will not have any more children although she has experience of the pain although she decides that she will not have any more children but usually it never happens most of the time she continues to have uh, more children so although a, a person may have she may have experience but still it does not uh, she does uh, after some time she uh, she it does not actually she does not realize that fact so similarly when a person may follow this path of impersonal absolute truth meditation and impersonal absolute truth he may even experience miseries he may practice na- detachment but then after some time he may fall down uh-huh. Uh-huh. because there is no positive experience of higher happiness on the other hand devotional service when a person practices devotional service because he experiences higher happiness automatically he cultivates knowledge and detachment just like a like a mother when she give when she gives birth to a child like she does not like like she does not have to be taught oh you have to when the child cries you have to attend to it because the mother has natural love for the child automatically she performs so many austerities like she gets up in the middle of the night huh, or she cleans the uh, stool and urine of the child huh. so because she has love for the child she performs so many austerities automatically so similarly when a person engages in the devotional service of the lord automatically he develops knowledge and detachment huh. like once uh in the beginning in the 1960s one indian swami invited some of the hare krishna devotees uh, to his program so when the hare krishna devotees went to his program so this indian swami introduced himself as a sanyasi as so and so swami and then after some time uh, he told uh, he offered cigarette to the hare krishna devotees this devotee said they were surprised huh? like uh, like he, he, this person claims calls him, himself as a swami and then why is he offering as a cigarette then he said we don't actually smoke cigarettes the swami was surprised huh? 
that these people are rejecting cigarettes. And then the Swami offered some tea and coffee to these Hare Krishna devotees. So this devotee said, we don't even drink tea and coffee. So he was even more surprised. <laughs> so then he said, okay, you are practicing spirituality, but then what is wrong? You can take, you can smoke and you can take tea and coffee, there is no problem in that. Uh-huh. So he was surprised. He said, no, we don't take, uh, we don't, we follow these four regulatory principles, we, we don't even take, drink tea and coffee. Then the Swami said, how do you actually get the strength to follow these principles? Then the devotee said, because of association with Srila Prabhupada and because of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we get the strength to follow these principles. So that is the key, that when a person associates with a devotee of the Lord, when a person comes in contact with a devotee of the Lord, and starts practicing this process of devotional service, he gets the strength to follow, to give up all the sinful activities. So that is why, in one particular verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva says, Atha naga, Atha anaga angres tava kirti tirta yor antar bahisnana viduta papmanam Bhutesh Anukrosha Susatva Shilinam Syat Sangha Monugraha Yeshanastava. Lord Shiva is saying in this verse Atha Anaga Angres Tavakirti Tirta Yor. Your lotus feet, he is actually praying in his in a series of verses, he is offering his prayers to the Supreme Lord Krishna. In this prayer he is saying the, the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord is so powerful that when a person comes in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord, it actually destroys all inauspiciousness. And it purifies a person from within and without. Antar bahi snana. Antar within bahi from without. It purifies a person from within and without. It purifies one of all sins. Viduta papmanam. Huh. So then Lord Shiva is saying that my only desire is to to get the association of the devotees of the Lord. Because the devotees of the Lord, they are always in contact with the with your lotus feet. To be in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord, that means to be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Because the devotees are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, my only desire is to Get the association of such devotees. And the Lord Shiva says, He says that the real benediction is that, the real benediction of the Supreme Lord is that He gives the association of the Lord. Especially this sentence is very powerful because many people come to the temple. And when they come to the temple, <coughs> Many people, they approach the Supreme Lord for different benedictions. They come to the Supreme Lord and they ask different benedictions. Huh. They ask for money, they ask for to get relief from distress. So that is at least good because at least he is coming to the Supreme Lord Krishna. Because most of the people, they go to the different people, they go to different demigods or they go to different political leaders or different great men in society to get relief from the problems. So, but then, at, when a person comes to the Supreme Lord Krishna, even if he comes with the motive to get relief from the problems, at least such a person is great because he has approached the right person, that is Krishna. But then when a person has short-term motives, that is to get relief from certain problems or to get uh, to get some wealth that is not the highest because when a person has the short term motives that once his problems are solved or once he gets his wealth then he may leave huh. but then little higher than that is a person who is a 
Jigyashu, or one who is inquisitive, that a person thinks, so oh, he just passing by K. Munshi Mark and then he sees some temple made of sandstone. So he is little attracted. Let me see what is this temple. He just comes inside. Uh-huh. Or he just sees an advertisement in the uh, newspaper, uh, six day Bhagavad Gita course. He is also bored with so many going to movies. So let me see what is this course. He just, out of inquisitiveness, he comes. So he does not have short term motives. So he, the, because of that, he is higher than the Jnani and he, he is higher than uh, Artha and Artharthi, or one who comes to get relief from the problems, or one who is seeking some material wealth. But even higher than that is a person who is a Jnani, who is searching after the absolute truth. He wants to know who is God. He has some knowledge of God, he comes to the Lord. So different people come to the Lord, but for different purposes. They ask different benedictions from the Lord. But then, what is the real benediction? Which, what is the real benediction which the Lord offers when He is pleased with the person? Or what is the real benediction we should ask from the Lord? That Lord Shiva is saying this verse. Lord Shiva is saying, the real benediction of the Supreme Lord is that He gives the association of the, of the devotees to a person. When the Supreme Lord becomes pleased with a particular person, then He actually gives the association of devotees to such a person. So that is the real benediction the Lord offers when He is pleased with a living entity. So, because when a person comes in contact with the devotee of the Lord, he actually saves the trouble of, or saves the time of going through so many millions of lifetimes. Like once a uh, devotee asked, Shila, uh, once Srila Prabhupada asked a devo- told a devotee, please paint a picture of Paramatma. The devotee said, well, then I don't know how Paramatma looks like. Then Prabhupada said, okay, Paramatma looks like this. He has four hands. Uh, he holds Shankar Chakra Gadapadma. His complexion is like that. His eyes are like that. And then he described. And then the, uh, the devotee painted the form of Paramatma. Then Prabhupada said, so because you heard from me, you have actually saved, you have saved the trouble of going through so many millions of lifetimes. The yogis and jnanis, they perform austerities for millions of lifetimes in order, by meditating on the Paramatma form of the Lord, in order to get the darshan of the Paramatma form. But then, when a person comes in contact with the devotee of the Lord, the devotee immediately tells, how does Paramatma look like? And then he says, Abod Paramatma is the personality of God. So, because of coming in contact with the devotee of the Lord, a person actually saves the trouble of going through so many lifetimes and performing so many austerities. So, that is the power of coming into coming in contact with the devotee of the Lord. Huh. Like one Srila Prabhupada was going in a airplane. So, that time uh, Prabhupada and two of his disciples were there. So one air hostess came. So air hostess asked the uh, Prabhupada was taking some puffed rice. Huh. Air hostess asked uh, that, uh, do you want something? Huh. Uh, I want to do something for you. Yeah. Do you need something? And Prabhupada said, I want some hot milk. Huh. So then she brought some hot milk. And then after some time she asked Prabhupada, that, uh, do you want something else? Rupa said, uh, can you give some fruits? Huh? And she brought some fruits also. And she gave fruits and devotees were very surprised. Uh, oh, this lady is having such a nice service attitude. So Rupa said, Rupa was appreciating. Rupa said, a woman by nature are very simple. They have such a nice service attitude. So then Rupa took the hot milk and fruits. And then, the lady came and then she saw that Prabhupada and, uh, and the disciples are eating some puffed rice. 
Then she asked that, can you give some puffed rice? Uh-huh. I want to taste. Then Prabhupada gave some puffed rice from his own plate to that devotee, to that uh, air hostess. Then she took that puffed rice. And then, that was the only contact of her with the devotees. And then many years later, once the devotees were going on a Harinam, in some uh, country in Africa, so then, uh, one particular lady received all these devotees and then she offered nice hospitality to that all the devotees who were going on Harinam. And then the devotees came to know that this particular lady, who is actually a full fledged devotee now, she was the same devotee, she was the same lady who actually got that rendered that small service to Srila Prabhupada in the airplane and then who actually took that Mahaprasad Srila Prabhupada. Because of that small contact with Srila Prabhupada, because of rendering that small service to Srila Prabhupada and, and the other devotees, so she actually became a devotee of the Lord. So that is the power of coming in contact with the devotee of the Lord. That is why Srila Prabhupada writes in this purport, I conclude with this, says that, In the impersonal conception of the Absolute Truth, one works without fruitive result, meditates and cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter. This is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee. Fortunately, if one develops directly a desire to engage in Krishna consciousness in pure devotional service, he does not need to undergo step-by-step improvements in spiritual realization. So when a person comes in contact with the devotee of the Lord, then he actually, uh, he solves so many problems. Huh? So we have, we have the fortune of coming in contact with Srila Prabhupada and also his followers. Huh? Although Srila Prabhupada may have left this planet more than 30 years back, but still he has written many wonderful books. Huh? You may see that the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, which are translated in many languages. So, even by reading the books which are which have been left by Srila Prabhupada, one can actually directly associate with Srila Prabhupada. And also by following, by associating with those who follow the teachings of Srila Prabhupada, one can also associate with Srila Prabhupada. And just by being situated, just by situating oneself in the association of a devotee, easily one can practice spiritual life. Just like, like suppose when you are going in the local train in Bombay, like I remember that when I for, when the first time when I came to Bombay, like when the first time when I was traveling in the local train, the peak hours, huh? so I was going from Dadar to Kanjur Mark, so when in the other, when I was there in the platform, I was like uh, completely, I became so afraid because the, like, by, just by seeing the crowd in the local train, I was feeling like, how will I be able to get inside the train? <laughs> and then how will I be able to get out of the train? It was in the evening time, in the peak hours. <laughs> so then I just waited in the platform for at least for one and a half hours so that the crowd will reduce. Uh-huh. So, but then, if you have to, then later I learned the technique to get inside the local train. If you have to get inside the local train or get out of the local train, you just have to be there along with the crowd. If you are just along with the crowd, automatically the people who are behind, they will push you and then you will be able to get inside. Uh-huh. And then, when you are get, you have to get out, you just have to be there along with the crowd who are going to get down then automatically others will push and then you will also get out. So similarly, to practice Krishna consciousness is very simple. We just have to take the association of devotees. If you simply take the association of devotees, then automatically you will learn, you'll be able to practice spiritual life very easily. In fact, association of devotees is not just needed in the beginning, it is needed in every stage of life. If a person simply 
situates oneself in the association of devotee, then spiritual life becomes very easy. So that is the point which Prabhupada stresses in the purport. So I'll stop here. If anybody has any one question, we'll take it. Otherwise, stop. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai.